politicians found out that people enjoyed feeling wealthy, even if they weren't. And again, we were not a country founded on the ideals of debt equals prosperity. No, no, you save, you invest, you prosper. And having Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and the FHA extend, 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 increase eligibility for mortgages. I mean, when my, when the Vietnam War ended in San Antonio, Texas, you know, my parents borrowed money from the parents and with the help of a VA loan, they barely got a mortgage. And it was known for their generation that they were supposed to strive to pay that mortgage off before they retired. You certainly don't go into retirement with mortgage debt. And yet, here we are in America today and the majority of retirees still carry mortgage debt. Think about that. You're in retirement and financially vulnerable. I know it makes it, it, but it is what it is. And it's the culture that we have accepted. And we've been told by our leaders that it's the way it should be. Who's questioning them? Oh, I think right now Mother Nature is questioning them. I think right now the coronavirus is questioning them. I think that there is going to be a severe cultural backlash where families feel the pain enough to say and make decisions on their own if they're encouraged to take on debt. Sure, we're gonna go back to our ways in, a, in some sense of the word, but there are predictions right now that unemployment could surpass that of what we saw during the Great Depression. I mean, these are unfathomable numbers that we're considering in America. During, at the apex, at the height of the Great Depression, one in four Americans were out of work. Mm -hmm. In two weeks' time, two weeks' time, we had 9.95, nearly 10 million jobless claims in America. In two weeks' time, we got to one in 16 Americans. And what we know from studying Google Trends, you can, you can track any word on Google Trends. Right now, if you track unemployment insurance, it's really popular, especially in Texas and in New York and in other states where there's been a tremendous backlog. Florida is going to be coming up big time because they have such an antiquated unemployment insurance system that people can't get through to file the unemployment insurance claims that they need to right now. But what we know from studying Google Trends is that the third wave was even bigger than the first and the second waves as other states went into shutdown. So we haven't seen the worst of what we're going to see in terms of the ranks of Americans who are unemployed. They took a survey just overnight. 75% of Americans have seen their income cut by at least 25%. In other words, even people who are keeping their jobs aren't making the same amount. Sure. They're not working the same hours. Maybe one of the two breadwinners lost their, lost their job. You've got your kids at home, online schooling, and you're trying to do your job even if you are working remotely. You may as well be on your roof trying to get your job done and, and form a sentence. I'm a writer. I mean, I, I mostly write and conduct research. And it's, it, things work out really well for me around 4 or 5 a.m., when the whole house is asleep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I this bet. is this is a cultural shift is what I'm trying to say. This is unlike anything generations have seen since those who survived the Great Depression. So Mother Nature is holding these people accountable with coronavirus, AKA coronavirus, which- And I'm not saying it's revenge or anything no, no, of that I, nature. I'm just saying it's it's shining a very bright light. I totally get it. It's kind of, it's, it's uh, it's uh, highlighting a lot of the things that they've been doing that we haven't been prepared for. And now, hey, you're being held accountable. What are we going to do now? I get that part. When we read, you know, the articles that say unemployment is projected by the end of second quarter to be at 30 percent. Mm -hmm. You just kind of you read it. You're like, yeah, it's going to be at 30 percent. You know, you know, you're looking at the news. It's going to be at 30 percent. It's going to be at 30 percent. And so let me skip the channel and I'm going to go to this next one. 30% is 30%. What, what does that really mean if you were to unpack? So, and here's what I mean by unpack 30%. If we were to unpack 30%, consequences, so ripple effect. If we go to 30%, 75% is minus 25% of income right now uh, of Americans. One out of four was unemployed back in the Great Depression. 30% means one in 3.3. So we're going to go into some tough times. What is the ripple effects and what industries, what happens to people, economy, safety, where does that go? 
What could I look like? So you're asking the key question here because for as large as the fiscal stimulus is, and we've already got two trillion out there, the Federal Reserve's going to lever up by a multiple of 10, $450 billion so that they can keep a lot of businesses still in business. Some of which may or may not deserve to go out of business, but we'll get to that. But the fact is, from what we know today, the stimulus checks aren't going to hit until when a lot of Americans have been out of work for six weeks or more, the time the actual stimulus money hits their accounts. Six weeks. Well, it was three weeks from the time of the signing of when, when Congress passed the legislation and it was signed into law. And by then, there were plenty of Americans who had been in shutdown for two or three weeks. So there have been a lot of people who have been trying to get by on God knows what. That's why you've seen wealthy restaurateurs in major cities open their restaurants back up on their own dime to feed people who don't have food. We're talking about bread lines that you read about in history class in middle school. People who don't have food. And let's, let's stick with restaurants for just a second. The, the percentage of restaurants that are never going to return, never, is tremendous. What do you mean by that? Never going to return? Never going to reopen. Never going to be able to find the financing. You, your average restaurant has two or three days of cash flow on hand. A great restaurant maybe has one or two weeks of cash flow on hand. But they've been asked by the government to keep all of their employees employed and wait for the Small Business Administration loans to come through and float them through to the end of September. A lot of business people in America did the math and said, this isn't going to work. And I can't tell you that the demand is going to be there at the end of the second quarter, best case scenario. I don't, I, you can't tell me that as many Americans are going to go out and spend the way they used to. You can't tell me that as many Americans are going to go to concerts, go to the movies, go to sporting events, go to music festivals. Get on planes. You know, something of this magnitude. I mean, there's a headline that hit today. There are more New Yorkers who have died as a, as a, as a consequence of the coronavirus than what, than what died on 9-11. You know, I was, I, I was in New York at the time. I worked on Wall Street at the time. It's something that reshaped my life and the way I viewed the world. Now magnify that. Spread that across a nation. We're going to change the way we spend. And if we change the way we spend, we're not going to need to tap into as many services as we once did as a nation. So what I'm trying to say is, let's say we get to 30% unemployment. And let's say the worst of the virus has passed. That doesn't mean the economy is going to heal overnight. It might take years. And that's what people are not factoring in. Because if you have something of such magnitude that it changes the way you view the world and it changes the way you view spending. 2019 was an extraordinary year in American history. Business investment had clamped down appreciably. We had a trade war going on in the background. There was a global economic slowdown. China and the United States weren't there weren't Chinese people coming in and buying U.S. homes. So, so there were a lot of things that didn't occur in 2019. To offset it was the American consumer, was the U.S. household. Consumption is typically two-thirds of the U.S. economy. That's the way it's been year in and year out for a very long time. In 2019, consumption was 90% of the U.S. economy as the Federal Reserve did everything they could to elevate the stock market, keep risky asset prices up, keep people feeling wealthy because they look at their 401ks, and spend, and spend, and spend, and spend beyond their means. 90% of U.S. gross domestic product in 2019 was consumption. I can't tell you when we're going to get back to a normal world of two-thirds of the U.S. economy being consumption because of the massive shock that this is placing on U.S. households and the way that they're going to perceive money going forward is going to be a tremendous change. So you're saying even after this, 
we go back to business as usual, the recovery is not going to be immediate because you have two camps right now, right? One camp is saying uh, the moment this thing clears up, uh, we're going to have the economy is going to go back to 30,000. Dow's going to hit 30,000. Everything's going to go back to you, you know business as usual. People are going to go back out and they're going to do what they're doing. You're saying, no, it's going to take a while for us to recover from this.